Hello, I'm Matt Glover, and this is my website for my client, Joel Levy. So to begin with, this is a navigation bar that I created for my website. The way that I carried it out was, I opened up Photoshop and created a rectangular banner, as you can see here. I then divided it into six tabs, and then created 12 individual pictures to achieve the rollover effect. When the user hovers over a single button, the color will change from dark to light because of the fact that there's two pictures or two layers for each button. Then when the user clicks on it, clicks on the tab, it'll redirect them to that link. So if the user clicks home, it'll redirect them to the home page. If they click the ban, it'll redirect them to the ban page, etc. Next we have the announcement page, the announcement box. This is simply just a text box featuring um, any text of the ban wants any visitors to see. This, this is very simple yet very important because it's one of the first things that the user sees. So if the ban wants the user to see something important or they want to display something to the user, they can easily edit this and change what the user sees upon visiting the website. I also have um, an image hyperlink and basically how it works is I just I found an image, a Facebook logo image and I linked it to their Facebook page so if, if the user wants to go to their Facebook very easy to see they click this redirects them to their um, new vintage Facebook band page and I also have a JavaScript image gallery as you can see it has the um, image description right here very useful and it also auto cycles through all the pictures but if the user wants to manually go through them they can click pause and just go through them manually through the um, five preset pictures that I put and then lastly I have a Google Calendar embedded on here this is really vital to the band because of the fact that gig the gigs are extremely important and they really need new fans so anybody that goes on this website can see any upcoming shows or events that the band is going to have in the future so that, that was definitely one of the biggest necessities for the website and then I also have a little um, gift that I created for the band, which is at the bottom of every web page. And the way that I created it was I had I made the band logo in Photoshop, and then I opened this I opened this up in Paint.net, and I changed the angle by 15 degrees and saved it. And I kept repeating that and repeating that and repeating that and saving it as new JPEG files. And then I put that all in a GIF builder, and then it basically made it so it plays all those pictures in a loop so so it makes it look like it's rotating so but it's not actually like a video file it's just all stills of it at different angles so it creates that effect which I thought was very neat and I thought it really fit the site very well and that's the home page so this is the biographies page the first page that you're redirected to upon clicking the band in the navigation bar is Joel Levy the band manager of my client up at the top right here it says his name and then his title. This is the default for all of the biography pages. And then it also has his picture under here with the new vintage watermark. And then to the right of this is the little scroll box with his biography and his, all of his um, information. And then there's also this little drop down menu under his picture where you can meet the rest of the band. Here's all the rest of the other band members. So let's say you want to meet Andre Escobar. Click here. And then here you can see it displays his name and position in the band and it also shows his picture and it also has all his unique um, information and his unique biography in this box as well okay so this is the photos page the way that I designed it was that I did nine pictures on each web page so three columns and three rows and I had the, I had a drop down menu in the top left because I really think that it helps with the user experience because it makes it much easier to sort through the photos. If a user wants to see, let's say, the Sweat Records gig and they want to see the photos from that gig, they simply hit Sweat Records and click Go. And then it redirects them to a web page that has strictly these photos. So it really makes it much easier to sort the photos so the user can see what they want to see easily. And this one's, this one's actually unique because there's so many pictures for sweat records from that gig that I couldn't fit it all on one page. So there's the first nine, and then the user can also go to page two and then look at the last nine. And it's as easy as that to view the pictures for the band. Okay, so this is a videos page. It has an identical layout to the photos page because I designed the videos page to be 
image hyperlinks rather than videos because I actually first tried to do videos by embedding um, in place of nine in place of nine image hyperlinks. I actually had nine video players, but obviously that was quite a mess because of the fact that the web page had to load all nine at the same time, so it was very very slow and sluggish. But I decided to change it to nine um, image hyperlinks because it loads very fast. And it's very easy to use. It has all the video's titles in the picture. So let's say you want to watch Energy Overdrive. You'll be redirected to another web page that contains the YouTube player that's embedded onto it. So you could just simply watch the video. Just click here and you can enjoy. And it also features my um, created introduction from iMovie as well. So this is the um, store page. Here's the little new vintage store banner at the top right here, the little picture. And I have the five boxes that represent the five areas of the store. And I styled these because I really felt that this well, this little like picture crooked picture frame style really fit the, the feel of the site. And these are all actually uh, hyperlinks. Like if you click here, it brings you to apparel. So I'll go here first. Here's a little, there's a little thumbnail gallery, and then there's also the larger um, picture when you thumb over it. And I felt this was the best, the best and most effective way to show off the products in the store, because it, because the user can simply scroll to whatever they want to see, and it presents it in a larger picture, and it also says the name of the item and the price, so it doesn't make the user go somewhere else to see the price, like some other stores online. And I feel like this is really the best way to do it. Originally, the way that the thumbnail the thumbnail and the larger image um, worked together was that the larger image would appear like right above the thumbnail, but I manipulated the CSS positioning so that it appeared more to the right, like far, much farther right and higher up as well. And I thought that this makes it look much more organized and clean, the way that the larger image is much separated from the thumbnails. And it's, it's the same layout for all the other pages, like miscellaneous is just different items for sale, but it's, it's the same layout. And same with music, you can buy the eight songs from the band or the CD as well. And there's also a listen to new vintage. It's just an embedded SoundCloud player. And it has all eight of the band's songs. And this is really the most effective way that I that I found to to really show off their songs because it's really it's a really nice looking interface and it's much better than the other music players that I found because I was looking at other HTML music players and all the other ones were all single song music players so it'd be really um, counterproductive to have eight different song players because it would take long to load plus it wouldn't really be great for the user because it would just be really ugly and there'd be eight different song players it wouldn't be a great experience I thought this is by far the most effective way to show off the band's music and there's also the order form the way that it works is there um, it's a little table and the the user simply goes to through the products that I showed earlier through these products these products and whatever they want to buy they copy this they copy this form and they input whatever whatever um, they want to buy like if they want to buy this hoodie they put the size and the quantity and then um, or if, if if they want to they can download the order form zip file they just click there this is a hyperlink that downloads it what you do once you fill out this form of what you want you have to go to the contact us page and send it and I'll go through the contact us page next Okay, so this is the new vintage contact us page. It contains the new vintage email form, and the need for this email form is 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 that it's a really easy way for anybody to contact the band, whether it be a record label or a fan asking wanting to ask a question or anything. The email subjects that I set up with this were tour dates, new vintage merchandise, and questions or other inquiries, because I felt that these were the most common things that somebody would be messaging them about or contacting them about. And in regards to the store and how to purchase items. You can either copy and paste the table that was on the store page that I mentioned earlier, or if you download the zip file and have the actual Word document, then you can choose the file and upload it, and then from there you get an email back, and then you can complete your order through that way. And this is the Contact Us page.